Pop Up Theatre presents Ghost Faces Podcast by Scott McQuaid. Welcome, listeners, to a very spooky edition of Red Eye Podcast. I'm your host, Scarlett. I would like to wish everybody a happy Hallow's Eve. By now, I'm sure you're all out at some fancy dress party, surrounded by Michael Meyer masks and Pennywise clowns, Megan dolls, Wednesday lookalikes, and slutty nurses. But then you could be one of those adolescents egging some poor bastard's house and covering it in toilet roll. Or perhaps you're trick-or-treating with your kid, taking them door-to-door and overdosing them on sugar. Or maybe you're like me, sitting in the dark, microwaving popcorn, ready to engage in that old-age tradition of watching a scary movie that is sure to give you nightmares. Well, if you are, then tonight's podcast is dedicated to you. Now, you all know what a big horror fan I am, and yet I find myself struggling what to watch tonight. Do I go with some 70s, 80s slasher classic, or should I stick with a more temporary choice? I mean, I could go way back to the 50s with some black and white hammer horrors. Listeners, my fate is in your hands. I want to be scared. So give me a call with some suggestions, and while I'm waiting, I'll just put some popcorn on. Right, any callers? No? Okay, well, while I'm waiting, I thought I might enlighten you with the origins of Halloween, in case you didn't know. The Halloween holiday has its roots firmly in ancient Celtic festivals, a pagan religious celebration to welcome the harvest at the end of the summer, when people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. Now, by the time this festival reached America, it had... Oh, wait, I have a caller. Hello? Hi, Scarlet. Happy Halloween. And a happy Halloween to you. So, you got a suggestion for me? Yeah. What about Hereditary? Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a good movie, but it's a psychological horror, as most of today's horror genre generally is. I'm thinking more blood and gore. Jump scares, you know? Thanks, anyway. I have another caller on the line. Go ahead. You should watch The Orphan. Oh my god, it freaked me out. Ah, kids don't really scare me, but thanks for your call. Next? What about Friday the 13th, final chapter? Okay, slasher genre, I like it. Although my favorite of that franchise is Jason Lives. Yeah, that was pretty cool. But what about some John Carpenter? What you thinking, watching Halloween on Halloween? Nah, what about The Thing? You're an 80s kid, right? Hell yeah. (laughs) Well, rock on, my friend. Next caller. Hi, yeah, what about Space Ninja? Whoa, we're going real B-movie. That's a comedy horror. Fun, but not quite what I'm looking for. Next. Well, for me, it's gotta be Hellraiser. No question. Ugh. Next. Dawn of the Dead? Ugh, I'm so over zombies. Next. Hello? Oh, hi. How's it going, Scarlet? Do you have a suggestion for me? I sure do. Well, what is it? Scream. Scream, huh? The original, I take it. Of course, except no substitutes. I take it you're a fan of the movie. What makes you say that? Because you're hearing that ghost face voice right now. (laughs) Nothing gets past you. So, how am I doing? Actually, not bad. Roger Jackson would be impressed, I'm sure. Do you know who I'm talking about? Of course. He's the voice of Ghostface. In the movies. That's right. So, why scream? Well, you said you like to be scared, and there's nothing more scarier than a home invasion, especially when you're all alone. How do you know I'm alone? Doing a podcast on Halloween and asking strangers what you should watch? (laughs) Oh, you're alone. Point taken, but why scream? I could just as well watch Nightmare on Elm Street and feel just as scared. No, you wouldn't. Why not? Because Freddy Krueger isn't real. He's a monster. Fantasy in your dreams. Whereas Ghostface is a regular person with a knife. And that is real. It could be anyone. Maybe someone listening to your podcast. True. And in the Scream movies, the killer is generally somebody quite close to their victims. Ugh, wait a minute. I gotta let my cat out. Give me a minute. All right, where were we? 
What's your cat's name? Chucky. <laughs> like the doll. I like it. <laughs> when are you going to drop the ghost face act? Who says it's an act? Okay, so then if you're ghost face, I guess you got to ask me that famous question. Oh, yeah, that's right. Come on, then. Hit me. What's your favorite scary movie? That was good. I got chills. <laughs> Honestly, um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 messed me up for weeks. Uh, but, you know, I've got to go with a classic. Psycho. Psycho. <laughs> oh my god, how did you know? Lucky guess. I think Psycho is the film that started off the slasher genre, and, you know, to this day I still can't take a shower without having a moment of anxiety where a potential killer could be on the other side of the shower curtain. <laughs> it left such a mark on me. Much like the way Jaws made you scared to go into the sea, you know. So what about you? You only a Scream fan? I'm interested in anything where somebody's getting gutty like a fish. Really into the gore factor, ain't ya? Well, yeah, I can see why you like Wes Craven's work. You're a fan too, judging by the title of your podcast. Well, his Red Eye movie was very understated, but I really liked it and it has a steady loyal fan following. Kinda like my podcast, so I guess it worked out. Wanna play a game? <laughs> wow, you're really playing it close to the script. Have I got time for this? Sure you do. Plus, I bet I know more about horror movies than you do. Oh, it's on. Shoot. In the script for Halloween, what was Michael Myers noted as? The Shape. That's right. One point to you. I'm afraid you're gonna have to up your game, my friend. Alright. What was Friday the 13th's original title before it was changed? What? Friday the 13th was always called Friday the 13th. Uh-uh. I'm afraid not. What are you talking about? They advertised it in Variety magazine as Friday the 13th while they were still in production. That title come along in the rewrites. In the first draft, it had another title. What? What is it then? A long night at Camp Blood. No way. Google it. All right, I will. Shit, you're right. Well, there's a first, listeners. I've been schooled by Ghostface. Now I have to take something of yours. What are you talking about? You can't lose and not have a penalty. We didn't agree to that. Too late. It's already done. Sounds like your snack is ready. You can hear that? Oh, yeah. As if I was in the next room. I'm just gonna go get it. I'll... I'll just be a minute. Take your time. We'll all be here... listening. <laughs> ah, no! Oh, God! Oh, you big bastard! No! <laughs> just to paint a picture for you listeners. I think she may have overcooked Chucky. Listen, you fuck! I'm calling the police and I'm gonna... Don't you listen, you little fucking bitch. In the area you live, the first responders are at least seven minutes away. Where I'm much closer. Listeners, call the police. Somebody help me. Ready for your final question. I'm gonna hang up now. If you do, you're dead. Whereas if you play, maybe you'll get the answer, and I'll let you live. <laughs> I, I don't want to do this anymore. Come on, Scarlet. You gotta be in the game to have a chance. Please, please, please just go away. Here's a final question. In Scream 2, when the movie Stab is playing in the theater, who actually directed the movie within the movie? <laughs> Um, it's Wes Craven. He directed the movie, so he would have directed the fake movie in it as well. I'm afraid that's the wrong answer. No, what? No, no, it has to be. The scenes in the Stab movie were actually shot by Robert Rodriguez. How, how do I know that's true? How do I know you're not just making it up? A real horror fan would know. Wait, 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 wait. You gotta give me another chance. All those years of watching scary movies, things Scarlet. What do you gotta do to stay alive? Um, leave. They, they never just leave. That's right. Problem is, I'm already here. What? Hello, listeners. 
Hope you enjoyed the show. I'll be coming for you real soon.